first of all, you know, the mandate of any central bank, first and foremost, is price stability. And until we have that, there's really not a huge amount more that they can do. Now, they've got the dual mandate, of course, in the US of also having full employment. But to me, the jobs market still looks like it's in a reasonably good position. So there's not a huge amount of justification from that angle either to look at rate cuts yet. So I think we're going to have to wait a little bit longer there. Now, in the UK and Europe, though, it's a very different situation, you know, as you've alluded to, I think as investors are now very aware that we're going to see rate cuts a lot sooner, uh, closer to home. And really, it's not going to be enough to say they're going to move in the shadow of the Fed and, and to mirror that they're going to have to walk their own path in, in the coming months. Maybe we'll come back to the Bank of England in a moment. But, but, but in terms of, let's make this 3D. So you've got the underlying economy, which, as you say, is motoring along OK. There are signs at the periphery of problems, for instance, in the consumer confidence data yesterday. But, but by and large, it's motoring along OK with employment remaining high. So the Fed is, feels pretty relaxed about where they are at at the moment with a downward trajectory in inflation, but albeit stuttering at too high a level. What about the markets? Are, they, they're struggling to find a prop other than the prospect of lower money to keep themselves high, or certainly were in the last month anyway. Yeah, that's absolutely right. But I'm not necessarily sure that that's going to persist. You know, when you look back at the 90s, from sort of 1995 through to 2001, we saw rates only coming down from some 6% to about 4.5%. Through that period, markets performed well. They actually returned a compound annual growth rate of more than 13% through that six-year period. So historically, it's not been necessary to have aggressive rate cuts to support equity markets, as long as you have good growth. And of course, there was good economic growth in that particular era. Now, when I look at the indicators at the moment, I think the growth looks OK. You know, I appreciate we just had quite weak Q1 uh, GDP data out in the US. But actually, if you average over with Q4 as well, it's running at about two and a half percent, which is pretty much smack bang in the middle of the range of estimates that, that we're looking at. So I think you know, inventory has played a huge part in that weak figure, and I wouldn't necessarily uh, take it at face value. I think it's probably doing a little bit better than that would suggest. The GDP now figure from uh, the Atlanta Fed as well, backing that up, suggesting that the economy is doing OK. Now, in terms of what's going to drive the market, though, I think it's ultimately it comes back to earnings. You know, I'm a fundamental investor here. That's what the stock market is going to really care about. But it's not just earnings this year. It's earnings over the next few years. And so it's how sustainable is that level of earnings growth that we're seeing at the moment? At the moment, it's really driven, again, by the Magnificent Seven in terms of that profit share. When we look at earnings season so far, there's been a huge weight to those mega caps once again. Uh, and I think that's a little bit of a concern. You know, we want to see that broadening out a little bit in the US. And if the economy is stuttering, there's that question mark over whether that's feasible.